Hello friends! In today's video we are going over the basics of Clip Studio Paint for drawing and painting. This tutorial is being presented in a brisk format to be more suited for folks with short attention spans or short on time. We are going to be going over a fair few things in this video, but some will be glossed over. The version being used at the time of recording is 2.3, but most of the information will apply to 1.0 as well. Let's get into it. After opening Clip Studio Paint for the first time, you'll be able to open a new document by clicking on the new file icon on the shortcut bar or from the file menu. Opening a new document. The first thing you'll see is project types. Illustration is the default, but there are other specialized documents like webtoon format, comic book, and animation. Starting out, we will stick to the default format. You can also choose your resolution here, either by using one of the presets or by manually entering a number. For sketches, I typically use a 1000 to 2000 pixel canvas, and for illustrations I go to 4K or larger, but that's not really needed per se. Just try out different resolutions and see what works for you. You can also set the paper color. I usually like to start with a medium gray. The paper color is just the color applied to the document at the bottom of the layer stack. This can be changed to transparent or turned off at any time. You can also name the file here or when you save it. You can leave everything at default and press OK to get started. Drawing tools. Once you have a document open, there's a bunch of panels open for changing tools, layers, assets, and their properties. These panels can be easily relocated just by dragging and dropping. You can see all your basic tool types on the left-hand side of the screen. You can see their shortcuts by hovering the mouse over the tool. For example, pressing P cycles through the various pencil and pen tools, B cycles through the paintbrush, airbrush, and special effect brushes, and E activates the eraser tool. One quick tip, you can make any brush an eraser by pressing C to set the brush to be transparent. You can press C again to return it to the original color. Similarly, you can press X to switch between the two regular colors. Brush size can be changed by using the left and right brackets, or by choosing the brush size in the panel here. Basic tool settings can be changed on this panel, but more advanced settings can be altered by pressing the little wrench icon. There's a ton of settings and that is beyond the scope of this video, but feel free to play around with settings. If you mess something up or you want to return it to default, you can press this button here. Undo and redo can be done by using these buttons on the quick bar, or by pressing Ctrl Z or Ctrl Shift Z to redo. Color. You can select colors through this panel or by using the color picker by pressing E or holding the right mouse button, or the equivalent on your tablet pen. There are several kinds of color wheels included, though I personally prefer the default square. You can find a color mixing palette here by clicking on this tab. The mixing panel is just a handy place to mix your colors off the canvas so you can have them available to you when you need them. Layers. Layers and layer properties can be managed on the panel on the right hand side. You can also change your paper layer properties here. To create new layers, you can press this button or use Ctrl Shift N. If you want to lock a layer's transparency, you can use this button. To lock it completely, you use the little lock button here. The Navigator. The Navigator is your way to see the whole canvas. Ctrl Zoom and flip the canvas view temporarily to see it mirrored, which is a very useful way to see it with fresh eyes. You can rotate the canvas with the R key or by using this slider. Double left clicking or tapping with your stylus while rotating will reset the angle. You can zoom in and out with this slider or by using the control plus and minus. Saving and loading. Saving and loading can be done with these buttons on the shortcut bar, with the file menu, or by using control S. Recent saves can also be found in the file menu. Clip Studio Paint does autosave, but I wouldn't recommend rely on that. Try to save whenever you start a new illustration and maybe every few minutes or so. You can also quickly export a flattened version of the file by clicking this in the file menu. There are many other tools and features available that are beyond the scope of this video, but this will get you up and running right away. If you have any questions about a particular feature or tool that didn't get covered in this first video, please leave a comment and I will try to answer. If you found this helpful, drop a like, and if you want more, subscribe. I have plans to add a whole bunch more of these in the future just to go over various parts of the program. I'll see y'all later.